bringing you key insights, tips, and advice from the brightest minds in the Canadian franchise industry. This is the Franchise Canada Chats podcast. I'm Angela Cote, your host of the Franchise Canada Chats podcast, where we take you into the world of franchising. Our interviews are with franchisees, franchisors, and industry leaders who give on the pulse expert advice and share their franchising insights and experiences. Hello, Angela Cote here, and I am here today guest hosting the CFA podcast, and I'm talking today with Brad Stevenson from Neighborly. Brad, how are you doing? Angela, I'm doing very well today. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Awesome. Well, I, I love to kind of give a little bit of context to people that are listening so that when I'm asking questions, they know where I'm coming from. But in this case, I'm really going to tighten that up because I mean, my story is nothing compared to what we're going to talk about here with, with neighborly. So, um, you know, my dad is the founder of a company in Canada that we grew to almost 500 franchise locations, but I mean, that pales in comparison to, uh, the excitement of neighborly, the, the, uh, 800 pound gorilla. So let's jump into that. And yes. Brad, yeah, it's been, it's awesome to have you on. Let's start with actually, first I'll say that you are the chief development officer for neighborly. So mm -hmm. anybody that's listening, um, if you've never really been exposed to this, what it is, is the person that's really responsible for bringing in the right franchisees and making sure that they're going to be a fit and that everybody's going to be, uh, be able to be successful. Now I'm sure you're not taking all the initial calls, Brad, but you probably oversee a, a team of people. Is that correct? I would be a very busy human being more so than I am already if I was taking all those calls, but I have the uh, great opportunity to work side by side with an unbelievable development team in, in uh, driving uh, the development and the, uh, the new, new sales filling in white space for, for our organization. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So let's, now that we got that part covered, let's talk about neighborly. I know because I'm, I'm fortunate to be uh, very immersed in franchising that you can't not know who neighborly is, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that haven't heard that overarching parent company brand name. Let's hear a little bit about it. Yeah, I appreciate that. So neighborly is the world's largest home service franchise, or we have 29 different brands and 5,000 franchisees uh, with is serving collectively 10 million or greater than 10 million consumers. Uh, we're in nine different, uh, nine different countries and really focusing on three things. We're focused on repairing, maintaining, and enhancing people's homes and small businesses. And the company operates on a platform that really connects uh, consumers with our world-class service providers uh, in their local communities where, where they do business. And it's really focused on meeting those, those standards that, that Neighborly has set. And we've got a vision as an organization to be so remarkable that we become a beloved household name. That's what we're focusing on, on being. So you think about Neighborly as, as the category for home service, kind of like what Kleenex would be or what Post-it would be for, for their particular category. They're the brand and they are uh, the category as well. And ultimately, the big driving force behind our value is providing an excellent customer experience really for both homeowners and for our franchise business owners that have invested in, uh, in our brands. So that's a, a, little bit about, a little bit about us and Neighborly and where, where we're going from a vision standpoint, Angela. Yeah, that's amazing. And I, I know a number of people from Neighborly and there's this feeling of this real, real true care and customer service, like you say, but amazing core values and culture. Yeah. And I just, I hear nothing but amazing things about, about neighborly as a company. So for consumers that might, um, might not recognize the name neighborly, let's go through the brands that, especially let's talk about the Canadian, the brands that are in Canada, they'll hear these names and go, Oh, that's part of neighborly. So let's go through, I think there's 13 in Canada. There are. We have 13 brands we are currently uh, developing with uh, across Canada, and don't want to make sure. I want to make sure I don't forget anyone. Right? That's and important. Would be upset, but uh, we have AirServe in the HVAC space. We have Dryer Vent Wizard, which is a brand we acquired back in 2020. Five Star Painting and uh, Grounds Guys, which uh, handles you know, think of anything in regards to taking care of landscaping, etc. Uh, Housemaster, 
uh, glass doctor. We have Mr. Appliance, Mr. Electric, Mr. Handyman, Rooter, which is our plumbing, plumbing company, uh, Rainbow International, uh, RPM, which is uh, real property management, and then Shelf Genie, which is another brand we picked up uh, just in 2020 uh, that is uh, doing exceptionally well up in Canada. So that is the 13. Okay, I won't. I, I have to admit, I was counting to make sure you didn't forget one because wouldn't that be like forgetting one of your kids? Like I was, as you were going through them, they were, I was using my fingers to count. So that's really cool. I, there's definitely some very recognizable brand names in there. I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, a lot of them and maybe some people recognized all of them. Um, and I see what you mean about service, you know, home service brands. And so, yeah, this is really exciting to think that as a company, Neighborly has systems in place that are probably transferred across all the brands that make it as, as a prospective franchisee of the brand, make it awesome because you can really trust that there's a lot of things figured out. Yeah. It's a great point, right? So as you think about, as you think about Neighborly, we've been in business for more than 40 years. And all through that time, as we continue to build the portfolio of brands, all again, focused on home service and small business, that we've had an immense amount of learning over that time period. And that experience has all been focused on home service. So it's not like we're playing in different areas, but we're focused on, on home service. And as potential business owners come on, um, come on board, they obviously have access to all of that experience and learning that we've had over time that's allowed us to be uh, really successful. And we've tried and learned and, and has put things in place that will really help homeowners, excuse me, uh, franchise owners be as successful as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to just be really upfront that what, yeah. I, I, what I love to do is, is help people that are listening really understand what it's like to become a franchisee, how to, how to figure that out, how to decide on a brand. So as we go, we're going to talk, we're going to shine a light on Neighborly because there's some amazing things that we're going to talk about with the, the training program and that sort of thing, but also just to help people understand, you know, how to make these decisions. So we're going to kind of combine that as we go. Okay. Um, yeah. So, cause I, I know that a lot of people that I, I get to talk to say, um, I didn't, I didn't know I could just go be a franchisee, right? Like they, they aren't sitting around, not everybody is going and looking for a franchise. A lot of people stumble across it. And I want more and more people to do that. I want, I want to help people. I want to empower them to make that decision yes. to get out of the, like the corporate nine to five that they're feeling stuck in and realize, I could run a Mr. Rooter or a Grounds Guys or one of these cool service brands. So that's what we're going to do as we go here. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And um, well, first of all, have you, I mean, do you see that a lot yourself? Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Like people that stumble across becoming a business owner and end up being very successful and happy? They, I do. I'd love to chat about that. I mean, a cu couple of things. One, you just brought up like Mr. Rooter. And I think it's so important for people to know when they're looking at home service, right? Or they're looking then obviously at Neighborly and our brands that you don't necessarily, you don't need to be a licensed plumber to own a Mr. Rooter. You don't need to be a licensed HVAC person to have an air serve, right? It's, and you don't have to have experience in it. It certainly can be beneficial, but you just need to say, hey, I'm a good I'm a good business owner. I'm a, I could have had experience in corporate, uh, in corporate America or in corporations in Canada and be able to understand like, Hey, I can take those learnings and use them to help run a business. You, you're not going to be using the wrench or the one changing out the air conditioner. You're going to have a team and lead a team and develop a team and it really help drive them um, and lead them to lead this business. You don't have to necessarily be the one wielding the wrench. Um, that, when you get that. I'm so glad you, you brought that up. And and by the way, we say corporate America. I know it's maybe because North I America. Know, it's, I'm it's okay. sorry. You're fine. <laughs> corporate Canada. Yeah, corporate Canada. No, we really I think we say corporate America because we think of North America. So you're good there. Um, but as far as the, yeah, that's such a great point that it's not like, if you're sitting there thinking, I don't know how to like swing a hammer because so I can't be the handyman one or like, it's not that. And because that's the whole point of the franchise is you're, it's more, and it's, you don't even necessarily need to know 
like business ownership. It's that you need to have some of the traits. And um, I guess we're kind of going to skip to that question. I was going to ask you a little later on about traits and then, and then we'll come back to shining a light on neighborly. But when you think about, cause you know, um, having the traits to be a, a successful franchisee, one that comes to my mind is leadership. Like you just talked yeah. about leading a team, right? Like, and then you might look, you might be in a corporate job and think, I don't know if I'm a good leader. Well, look at what you're doing right now. Are you leading people? Are you, are you, are you, you know, role modeling to anybody? Like kind of looking into that might be how you'd figure that out. Um, so it's, it's not what people think. Um, so maybe we'll just go into that for a second. So what are a couple of traits that you think make a successful franchisee? Yeah. I, I definitely think someone who has a commitment to want to lead a team. And to your point, you didn't have to be someone leading 50, 60 people somewhere. To your point, it could be, hey, you're leading pieces of a business that helps other people. You may not be actually leading uh, specific people. Um, I also looked for people that love to learn and can also follow a system, right? So the systems are going to be in place uh, with coming from a franchisee should be great systems. And you've got to be able to, uh, to follow those. And I also really think you have to want to make a difference in people's lives, mm -hmm. right? That is so important because not only your consumers that are utilizing, let's say, plumbing, which a lot of times they need you right now, and you're going to help them with some challenge that they have in their house, you're going to help them help change their lives, hopefully for the better that day but also for your team members, right? You're gonna help change their lives and help them better their lives, et cetera. And another couple of things I really look for for folk is, do you have a strong work ethic? Because it's not gonna, it's, it won't be easy. Just because you sign up for a franchise doesn't mean like, all right, I start tomorrow and I'm, I'm gonna be rocking and rolling. It's gonna take some work and you have to be able to invest that time up front. And the other word we use a lot is grit. Mm -hmm. You got to know you're going to have to get in there and work at it and be successful uh, to be really to be able to drive that. And I think the leadership, the grit, the grit, the willing to uh, to work hard and understanding what you're you're signing up for is so, so really, really important. If someone tells you, hey, it's going to be easy, it's a get rich quick type of scheme. I would question what what uh, who you're talking to on that, because that's that's not the case. You're going to have to work at it. We hope you're enjoying this episode so far. Did you know that Franchise Canada has a newsletter sent twice a month that's packed full of fresh franchise opportunities? With Franchise Canada e-news, you get new content from Franchise Canada magazine, franchisee success stories, industry news about CFA members, educational videos all about franchising, and you can keep up to date on the newest episodes of the Franchise Canada Chats podcast that you're listening to right now. Plus, by subscribing to Franchise Canada e-news, you get a free subscription to Franchise Canada magazine. Subscribe now at FranchiseCanada.online. Now, back to the podcast episode you are enjoying. Yeah, such a good point. And, and I'm so glad you brought up the grit because when I, back in the day when I was on the, in the field, um, on the field side in our family <laughs> business as a franchise in the franchise company, I saw that again and again, where franchisees thought that they often thought that they're just going to open a store, turn the lights on and everybody would come running in. And it just doesn't work like that over time, you know, it builds, but you still have to hustle at time, like up and down, you know, sometimes you might get a little bit of a, a reprieve, but other times you're really hustling and so you've got to have that. But what I really want to highlight that you said there, what I, I love this is the, the, the purpose that comes into it and making people's lives better. I think it's, it's something that most people wouldn't naturally realize is a key component here. Like, doing plumbing, um, you know, plumbing or, or like all these home services, the last thing you probably initially think is that there's some purpose to that, but you're walking away and people are happy. And, and so that's, that's really cool. It is. And, and it is so important. I mean, in some form or fashion, each one of our brands, you know, think about the person's home. That's where most of us spend a huge chunk of our time, especially in the way we've been for the last couple of years. Right. We're spending way more time in our home than we have in the past. And people want to take care of where, where they live, right? It's generally one of the largest investments anyone's going to make, right, is, is their home and taking care of that and keeping it good in good order and having it the kind of place you now might spend all 24 hours of, 
of your day in. Hopefully that continues to change. So we, we will uh, be back in the workplace more and more, but it really does. People want to, to experience that. And the other piece I look at is a lot of our franchise owners make big differences in their community, not only with employment and, and people that work for them and that in the households uh, that they take care of from a consumer standpoint, but they give back to their community so much as well. And I think that's such a big piece of franchising just in general, but it is certainly at the bat, at the core of what neighborly and our, our business owners do. And there's just endless amounts of stories of how people help each other, help, help their community, help their fellow franchise owners, et cetera. And that's where I think we're franchising that's where it's at its best, right? You really see that piece play out. Yeah, you're speaking my language. I love it. And yeah, the, I mean, uh, people often say when they're trying to decide if they should use franchising to grow their business. And it's like, well, do you want like local business owners in the community that can go connect with the community and do things to, to give back to the community? And I think just to demystify for anybody that's listening and thinking, I don't know if I could be a franchisee. It, that's an example of how you, that's how you build business is by getting out in your community and meeting yes. other business owners and other people and, and, and all of this. And actually this will segue into talk about, we'll talk about the training platform in a minute. Um, Cause this is a big component of becoming a franchisee is that you're going to get that support. You're going to get help with everything from the minute you sign to become a franchise, even throughout the process of deciding, but then you become a franchisee and then you're going to get guidance on how to get your business up and running and some things you can do to, to get people to hire you, um, you know, and, and use your service. So let's talk about the training platform. So I would hope that most franchise companies, or, they, or I hope they all have some kind of training. Let's talk about what's different about Neighborly's training platform. Sure. And this is one of the things that I would always tell people, there's a handful of things, as you start on this journey to figure out, hey, if I want to go and uh, into franchising, one of the things that doesn't always get asked, which I tell people they should always ask is, what does training look like? And I don't mean just training on the front end, like, hey, I just decided I wanted to own a, uh, a window genie, right? Yeah, there's going to be the training. We can talk through that. But once you're up and running, what is the continuous training that they do every single year? Is it evolving? Are they staying up on top of consumer cha changing? Are they on top of the, how the laws are changing? And are they evolving to be able to help, you, help that person grow their business year in and year out so that they can grow same store sales every single year. And it's so important. Yes, I think everyone has some type of launch training, but you gotta always ask, how are you training over the life of uh, as, as being an owner? That's where I think the difference, difference really plays out. But if, if you look at our training, it has evolved certainly over time and certainly the last two years, it has evolved. It used to always be in person. Uh, obviously, we've had to do some of that virtually, and now we're, again, evolving to part of it is virtually. We've learned that we've been able to do part of that training virtually, and then now that we're able to, to come together, uh, again, we are doing some, uh, some of the training for our brands as well. Back, back here in, in Texas is generally where, where that's done, and I think it's important for people to know that th there will be a combination of that. And I love the fact that actually we are getting back in person. It feels, mm -hmm. it feels good to actually see each, see each other uh, in person from, from that standpoint. But you will have a person that comes in and our training, depending on the brand, is differentiated. So some brands are much more technical and take longer for something like Rainbow, that it'll be a much uh, longer ramp up, right, from a timing perspective versus some of the other brands that may not need a licensing or may not have as much technology uh, in it, you have a, sh a shorter training win a window. All of them being appropriate to ensure that the person is up to speed on the technology, up to speed on the systems, the strategy, how to get uh, launch their, their brands, et cetera, uh, in the proper way to be able to, uh, to get out. So we have people for each one of our brands, uh, kind of called Sure Start Coordinators, those are the individuals that will work hand in hand with the, with the new franchise owner of getting up to speed, right? Getting and launching and getting the, the business launched and off the ground. And then, because that takes a really specific role and really specific skill set to be able to do that. 
And then obviously we will have uh, franchise business coaches, which will be uh, with the with the owner every step of the way, walking them through what the tools are, how they should be utilizing them, latest technology, marketing that they're working on, et cetera, to be able to ensure they're driving their business, you know, day in and day out, week in and week out, month in, month out, year in and uh, year in and year out. And I think about the advantages that that we provide or franchising provides, but certainly na- neighborly is we have comprehensive support because we are a national brand, right? We we are able to provide a lot of support that certainly if someone's a, a sole proprietorship, it's going to be challenging for someone to do some of this. Or if there are brands that are still uh, small or younger in their life cycle, may not be able to provide all of this. But we offer the training, all the marketing support. We have over 150 people in our marketing team. Um, yeah, that their sole purpose is to be able to help the franchise owners and engage our consumers uh, so uh, and create customers uh, for them. They also help with location support. Uh, we have a ton of enhanced IT support uh, for all of our, our business owners. And, you know, if you're, again, a, an independent person that's doing that, it's hard to get all of those things. It costs too much or... They're going to have to maybe take a scaled down version because of because of the expense of of a lot of that. And um, so that's probably the front end piece that really kind of gets you up and running. And then the one last thing that I uh, that I love is it's just the network, right? The network, if you're part of Mr. Appliance, right, as you're getting up and running, you have a a franchise owner that you're you know, you partner with, you're working with kind of as you get up to speed. And it's nice to be able to pick up the phone and call someone because if you're in your business by yourself, you're not going to call your competitor and say, Hey, how are you handling this? Or what's going on with that? They're not going to tell you. Right. But when you have a network of, you know, thousands of owners or hundreds of owners within a brand, you have that support system for someone that's been there, you know, where you've been. And that's the beautiful thing about the neighborly network is them wanting to be able to help each other out to ensure the success uh, of their particular brand. So I think that's just a couple of pieces um, that we talk about, but Mm -hmm. I would say focus on the front end, get out, get out quick. And then the continuous training, always ask about what is the continuous training that you're going to receive because it's so critically important for the long term. You just gave a lot of good juicy. I know. I'm sorry. I was long winded on that. No, that's good. I just I'm just going to dive deeper in a couple of them with you. The uh, the ongoing training can't emphasize enough how much I agree with that. You know, like so often you see companies and and they have what I call hotline support, you know, where you, the franchisee can just like the franchisor will say, oh, they can call us if they need us. We have an operations manual and we give them some marketing material. And it's like, what if like, are you, how are you guiding and coaching them ongoing? And I know you have franchise business coaches, as you mentioned, designated to the franchisees. And um, so that they can they can go get some support. Let's talk a little bit more about what that looks like. And then I want to touch on the network. But what so do they meet with the franchisee maybe every couple of weeks sort of thing? It doesn't need to be. I'm sure there's a range of ways it's done in different different franchisees, depending on their needs. There is, there are. So as you think about, I think, the maturity level of where where brands uh, or where owners would be. Yeah. Uh, certainly in the in the ramp up stage, there's a lot of engagement. We also have gone to a combination, you know, we used to always be in person. We then went 100% virtual. Uh, we are now this year exceptionally focused on making sure we get actually get out. Our operations team is getting out now that we're all traveling again, et cetera, is to get out and see all of our owners, right? Because over the last two years, we've added a number of owners that many times weren't seeing us in person on a regular basis, certainly saw us on this platform and we had conversations on the phone, but we think it's so important to be able to build that long-term relationship is you got to get out and see see everybody. So our team is out on the road meeting with our uh, franchise business owners on a consistent basis, right? They have check-in calls on a monthly standpoint. They have their in-person checkpoints that they have uh, throughout the year. We have our operations, so like our brand presidents will have town halls, uh, whether they're monthly or quarterly, depending depending on the brand, where it's talking about 
uh, hey, here's how we're performing, here's things we're working on, uh, really to ensure that we have an open platform from a communication standpoint. Uh, we also have a very extensive communication platform from our marketing organization, talking about the latest and greatest insights of what's happening with the consumer and how we're tackling those things and providing them tools to be able to utilize within their local market. Because uh, that, that is another huge benefit of our organization is the amount of marketing tools and support that we do provide because not everyone's an expert at SEO and everyone's not an expert at building a website. And, you know, it's important to be able to have that, that type of support. That is a continuous uh, ongoing, uh, ongoing piece as well. Um, we, we just had once a year, we have our, uh, we call it reunion, where we come back together. We just had this uh, last fall, which was awesome uh, for us to be able to, to, to get together uh, as an organization. And that's where you, you, all the brands come together. You get to, you know, talk about, hey, what's working, what's not, developing uh, leadership skills and all the pieces that, that I think a, a large franchise or even small franchise or ought to be providing um, their franchisees to be successful within their business. That's perfect segue back to just the network too. I just want to really emphasize that, that how much I agree and, and, and would recommend that anybody that's looking for um, lo looking to sort of vet a brand and neighborly, you clearly have this figured out the importance of leveraging the collective wisdom. So you're bringing people together, but you're also encouraging them to call each other. Like they're running the exact same business in a different market, or even if they cross pollinate a little bit with the different brands, I'm sure like because it's home services, there's a lot of information to be gained there. So I just wanna make sure that people really pick up on that because that's really cool. Yes, and another piece, not only on that, if you think about uh, the the customer side of it as well. So if if you're a Mr. Rooter and an AirServe and a Shelf Genie that are all in one city, Right. When someone has a great experience with one of those brands, then they think about, oh, I had that great experience with Mr. Rooter neighborly brand. What other brands do they have? And they're like, hey, I had a great experience there. You're going to you're going to see customers share. Right. And that connectivity and the, the stickiness of the, the customers going across the platform is so important because it reduces the cost to be able to acquire um, your your customers, et cetera. And that is a great benefit for us. of neighborly, you think about you know, 13 brands we have in Canada, the 17 brands we have in, in the U.S. is that that connectivity across the brands, not just the brand you're, you're in, but the, the connectivity across those is such a powerful tool for getting customers um, and keeping those customers for the future. Yeah, that's awesome. And the, because Neighborly has been around a long time and, and has so many brands under its, its banner, um, I think that it, you know, there's, I mean, there's obviously there's a lot of things figured out. And the, the more, the more brands that have, you know, bumbled along initially to figure things out, the better if somebody's looking for it to be figured out for them so they, they can plug and play. And like you said, it takes grit and, and other important things and traits and things, but to know that the formula is there is really, really cool. So, um, well, that's, that's awesome to hear about just the, the training, the ongoing um, support. Uh, we've got just a couple minutes left and, and I, I wanna ask you, um, one of the things I wanna ask you in a minute here is just um, if there's anything else that uh, a, fran a prospective franchisee should be thinking about or can do or, or whatever, we can talk about that. But did I miss anything that we wanted to talk about that neighborly does that that or do we capture i mean obviously there's a lot more but but in terms of supporting franchisees or, or why pick neighborly over um another brand did i miss anything there or did we do okay no i i i think we've done a, a good job i think one piece to just cover is as you think about home service most people don't wake up in the morning and say hey i want to open a home service right but as they get in and they understand their why and they understand what their passion is and they start learning about franchising they understand they're like oh they start to understand that home service really can deliver on that it's not just i wake up and they're like hey i like eating at that restaurant or i work out at that type of gym it's not that's usually where you start but it's not necessarily what what your passion might end up being so i tell them look at home service right and it's it's worthwhile they're essential brands. They nothing's proof, but right, we call them recession resistant or the resilient uh, against 
against pandemics, against economic turn, uh, downturns, et cetera. And Neighborly is an opportunity where you have the great support of all of these different brands, which helps drive the success of, of the business. And then for the long term, the consumer for home service is an unbelievable place to be. I mean, people's homes, they're going to continue to invest in their homes. They're spending more time in their homes. Uh, homes are getting older, so they need more, more things fixed on them, and they're getting smarter. So you need a specialty person many times to be able to fix a lot of those things. And the consumer trends for the foreseeable future are exceptional for home service in regards to long-term growth. Like it's not going away, right? You need folks to come do plumbing and, and fix your air conditioner and paint your home. And uh, where the consumer is going is only going to drive that for home service in the future. And luckily for us, from a neighborly perspective, we're, we're well positioned to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is, is investing in uh, home services brand in general, but especially uh, neighborly, you've got essential services. So it's less yeah. risk. It's also less risk because there's, it's a lower investment. There's no rent to deal with. That's a big thing. Um, and then, and then just that the, the future of home service franchising is, is on the rise. Like it's not, it's not going away. Like you said, even if, even if people do go back to being in person, all that people will always put money into their home. They have to for, for a lot of these things that are essential. So, um, like the plumbing and that. So, yeah, so it's, it's a good, a good opportunity. And I also love that franchising has shifted so much from just being quick service restaurants, right? And, and there's so many things. And that's, that's one of the things that my team and I get to experience is just the variety of things that people are franchising these days. It's amazing, isn't it? That, yeah, it, I mean, it, that's what's it's great about just, the industry. It is. It is such a great industry. And, and so many things I, 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 for people that are watching uh, visually right now, I even have an, I love <laughs> franchising nice. card that I'm holding up. It's from the CFA. So I think I'm allowed to show it. Um, but yeah, I love franchising when, when done right. And we talked about a lot of very important things. It's not for every person out there though. It's you got, yeah. so let's just review, you know, systems oriented grit, um, you know, being willing to go out into your community. We talked about a lot of things. So if anybody's listening, make sure you go back and catch those. Um, what's one last tip before we hop off? Actually, before I ask you the tip, what's the best way for people to find, find out more about Neighborly with, or find you um, or your team before we go to the last question? Yeah, so the best way is to go to neighborly.com, right? You can get into neighborly.com. We have brand new websites from a development standpoint. We just launched two weeks ago, uh, but you can go there and it will take you through, you know, the learning and education about franchising. It'll talk to you about what uh, home service is, what Neighborly is, and our brands. And then all of the information is there to be able to get in contact with our, with our development team uh, to be able to start that conversation or learn more about uh, any one of the brands that uh, we're currently developing within Canada. Awesome. And I, I really encourage people not to be afraid to take that step because you're not committed just because you took the step. I think a lot of people are afraid to take that first step. And it's like, no, we're just going to start a conversation and we're going to guide you and work with you. So it's not as scary as it might sound. So, yeah. So last question here then is okay. one last tip you would have for somebody who's thinking of becoming a franchisee. What's, you know, is there anything else that they should do or that, that we didn't cover that they can just one thing that stands out right now for that, for that. Let's see. One thing I would tell them. I would, <laughs> it doesn't have to be the one and only, but just I, I gotta narrow it, right? Uh, yeah, there's a lot, right? Before you go on your journey to decide, hey, is this right for me, or you know, for you and your family, whatever it might be, I would really sit down and understand what is your why for doing this, and what are your goals. Don't jump into it like understand like why am I doing this? Do I want to create a legacy and and in my community, do I want to build a business and leave it for my family? Do I want to build a business and sell it so later I can retire? Or I want to be my own boss? All the things that go with it, but really understand why you want to do that because that'll help start your focus and understand your goal. Write down your goals of what you want to what you want to achieve because once you get into the research, you're going to zig and zag on what you're thinking about. And if you always go back to your why and you always go back to your goals. It will help. It'll help narrow the focus for you uh, as you go through it. And then once you have that built, 
do your homework. I think he just said, hey, don't be nervous about the conversation. Before you even do the conversation, you're looking online, you're having conversations with, with maybe existing franchise owners. There's all things you can do really to do your homework, but I would understand your why, write your goals down so it kind of guides you down your path, and then do your homework. It's so important to do that homework so that you find um, you know, the, your passion and what you're looking to do to be able to go back and deliver on your why and your goals, because that's that's what's important. Yeah, that's so such a good point about the zigging and the zagging. And like, that was really like a humdinger of a, of a good tip, Brad, even though you were like, not sure which tip to give. It's such a good point. Get clear on your why first, because you're probably going to get a little distracted along the way, but know your goals and and what, why are you doing this? So that was awesome. I might steal that one from you. You steal away. It's all in pursuit of helping people get into the right franchise so that they can be successful. So it's, it's for the, for the greater good. So that thank awesome. you, Brad, so much. This has been awesome. I really enjoyed learning a lot more about Neighborly and really appreciate you, you sharing and hope to see lots more success uh, of Neighborly and successful franchise owners across Canada. Angela, thank you so very much for your time and thank you for what you do in spreading the, the, the word about franchising, spreading the word about uh, neighborly, but it's a, a benefit, I think, to your point earlier, which was I want to just keep having more people stumble into and find franchising and what you're doing is helping that. So it's much appreciated. Thanks for listening. For more franchising resources, including how-to articles, expert advice, franchisee success stories, and franchise opportunities, visit FranchiseCanada.online. Don't forget to subscribe to Franchise Canada e-news while you're there. You can also learn more about franchising at CFA.ca and connect with specific franchise opportunities at lookforafranchise.ca. Now go be awesome.